As always, please pause the video and try the question yourself before moving on. We're going to go ahead and draw a picture of the situation. Now this picture will represent part one of the problem. It turns out that this problem will be broken up into two parts. In part one, the block is sent up the ramp with an initial speed of six and a half meters per second, and then it travels a little bit up the ramp, about a half of a meter, before it encounters a spring. But let's not worry about the spring just yet. We only want to look at the situation in which the block travels that 0.5 meters. Now, it turns out that because there is friction present here, we cannot use a simple energy conservation formula. We're going to have to use a modified version of the formula. So I'd like to look at that next. On the initial side of the equation we have the kinetic energy as well as the potential energy. We have those same energies on the final side as well, kinetic energy and potential energy. But because of the presence of friction we're also going to have some thermal energy present and that's the key difference. If there was no friction then we could have taken this term out. But of course here we're going to leave it in. What we'll do next is note that initially there is no potential energy because the box is starting at ground level. So we can actually remove this from the equation. Next, we will replace all of the energies with their corresponding expressions. Now, of course, we have m for mass, vi initial velocity, vf final velocity, hf is the final height, g is the gravitational constant, f sub k will be the kinetic frictional force that's present while the block slides up the ramp, and then d will be the distance that the block is sliding up the ramp. We can replace fk with the normal force times the coefficient of kinetic friction. We must remember that for a ramp situation, the normal force, which points sort of in this direction so that it's perpendicular with the surface, the normal force for a block on a ramp is not mg, it is mg cosine theta. That is an important fact for any ramp situation, that the normal force is going to equal mg times the cosine of the angle. So we'll make sure to make that note. So actually, why don't we replace the normal force with mg cos theta? Now we will notice that all the terms contain mass, so we can cancel the mass out of each part of the equation. We also can make a substitution for the final height. If we look at the diagram, the final height was marked with that blue line. We have a bit of a right triangle right there, so we know that the sine of 25 degrees would equal the opposite side, which would be the final height, divided by the hypotenuse. Well, that hypotenuse is 0.5 meters. So basically, when we cross multiply this equation, the final height is going to equal 0.5 sine of 25. So we can fill that in for the final height. Now everything in this equation is known except for the final velocity. So let's plug in all the known values next. And then we can use our algebra skills to solve for the final velocity. We should get approximately 6.042 meters per second is equal to that final speed of the block at this point of its motion. So that's part one of the problem. Let's go on and look at part two, which involves the spring. So here's the picture. It's a little bit crude, but what we have is the box that just finished sliding up the ramp from part one. Remember, the speed at this point was actually calculated as 6.042 meters per second. Indeed, that's going to become the initial speed for part two of the question. Now, as the block slides up the ramp, it encounters a spring, and then it squishes that spring compresses it until it comes to rest. So actually the final speed is going to be zero. What we are trying to calculate is the distance by which that spring compresses as it's bringing the box to rest. Now we're gonna use the same equation that we did before. It almost looks like energy conservation, but because of friction, we're going to have to include that extra ETH term. So let's rewrite that equation. Notice that we have kinetic energy terms on both sides. We've got our potential energy terms. We now have introduced a new form of energy, which is known as the elastic potential energy. And the reason we've done that is because we have a spring. So springs that get stretched or compressed will contain some elastic potential energy. So we've shown that. And then as mentioned, we've got that extra E thermal energy on the right side of the equation because of the presence of friction. Now let's keep in mind that initially the spring is not stretched or compressed. It's simply in a relaxed formation. So we can cancel out that energy initially on the left side of the equation. In addition, consider that the block is being brought to rest. So because the final velocity, or excuse me, the final speed is zero, we can drop this term out right here. That should have said VF right there. So that drops out. So we can clean up this equation just a little bit. And then we can also replace E thermal with the same expression we had from the part one. 
Notice once again that this term right here is the normal force. We have the coefficient of kinetic friction here. And then instead of d, we've put the delta x. Indeed, that's what we're trying to find. Remember, we don't know the d. We don't know the distance by which the box travels up the ramp. So this is sort of our unknown, which actually appears in this term of the equation and also right there. So that's our goal is to find that. Another challenge is to make sure we come up with an expression for the initial height as well as the final height. We've already noted that the height at this point was equal to 0.5 sine of 25. Sorry, I got a little messy in there. We're gonna to need to come up with an expression for the final height over here. Now we can use trigonometry once again. We would see that the sine of 25 is equal to that opposite side, which is the final height, h sub f, over the hypotenuse. Now the hypotenuse would have been measured from here to here, which was the 0.5 meters, plus the additional distance that the block is traveling up the ramp, which we're calling delta x. So technically, that hypotenuse is going to be 0.5 plus delta x. So why don't we replace the initial height with 0.5 sine 25, and the final height, if we cross multiply here, will be replaced with 0.5 plus delta x times the sine of 25. So there we've substituted in for the heights. I admit this is getting a little bit messy, so I'm gonna clean up the workspace and begin to fill in some known values. Keep in mind again, because I'm gonna take away the pictures now, that we're looking for delta x, that's the distance up the ramp that the box is traveling as it's compressing the spring. So there we've plugged in all the known values. Notice that we changed the mass from 200 grams to 0.2 kilograms. Notice the initial speed was the final speed of part one that we found earlier, so that has been plugged in. And then all other known values have also been plugged in, but I think what we need to do is pick up our calculators and maybe simplify the left side, simplify that term, maybe simplify that, and also simplify that. We could then distribute the 0.828 into the bracket. Now here we have a quadratic equation, so let's collect all terms to one side. And then we can use the quadratic equation to solve for delta x. And when you do that, you get 0.132 meters. There was a negative answer as well, but you can reject that one. So there it is.